In this presentation, we will focus on the last mode of operation, the counter mode. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one will understand the working of counter mode. Outcome number two, we will know the difference of working of counter mode from the output feedback mode. And outcome number three, we will know the applications and advantages of having counter mode of operation. We know basically there are five block cipher modes of operations. Number one, the electronic code book. Number two, the cipher block chaining CBC. Number three, the cipher feedback mode CFB. Number four, the output feedback mode OFB. And number five, the last mode of operation is the counter mode. So in this presentation, we are going to focus on the counter mode of operation. If you are clear with the OFB, the output feedback mode, then understanding the counter mode is not a big deal. Basically, counter mode is widely used in today's scenario. The applications of counter mode in the asynchronous transfer mode, the ATM, the IP security in the network security areas, these counter modes are widely used. The counter mode with AES is widely used nowadays. In OFB, we used nonce. Here we are going to replace the nonce and we are going to introduce a counter. Now this counter is acting as an important part in this counter mode. Anyway, I will talk about the counters when we see the diagram. As I already mentioned in the counter mode, the counter we are going to use and the size of the counter is going to be the size of the plain text block. Say if you are going to take the plain text block size as 128 bits, then obviously the size of the counter is also going to be 128 bits. And that is why I mentioned the size of the counter and the plain text block size should be the same. Since XR operation is going to be carried out, so we want the plain text size and the counter size should be of same. Are we going to feed the same counters to all the plain text blocks? No. So for different plain text block, we will be having different counters. How we are going to do that? It's so simple. Let's assume the first plain text block is having a counter. And obviously the first block will be having the counter value which is initialized. So let's assume the counter value is initialized. And this is the value that is given for the first plain text block. And what about the counter values for the other blocks? So obviously the counter value is going to be incremented so that other blocks will be having different counter values. So what is the biggest advantage of having this? Since the counter value is different, obviously we will be having different ciphertext. Even if we have two plain text blocks with the same data, we will be having different ciphertext because the counter values are different for different plain text blocks. This is about encryption. Then what about decryption? For decryption, the same sequence of counter values is used. For example, if the plain text block 3 needs to be encrypted. So obviously, whatever sequence you follow for encryption, the same sequence should be followed for decryption. You will understand things when we see the diagram. So when we are sure that the same sequence of counter values is used for decryption, obviously, whatever we use for encryption, the initialized value, that is also required for decryption. So the decryption also should be known with the initial value of the counter. Only then we can increment the counters and we can recover the plain text back. Then what about the last block? Because in the last block, we will not get the exact number of bits as the plain text block says. It may be falling shortage. In that case, the appropriate number of bits from the plain text and the appropriate number of bits from the counter value is taken. Let's see the encryption and decryption of the counter mode now. So this is a very simple diagram. If you see here, the counter is actually initialized. Now this counter value is actually given to the encryption function. And this encryption function is going to take two inputs. One is obviously the counter value and the other one is the key. Now the output of this encryption function is not the cipher text because we are not encrypting the plain text. Rather, we are encrypting the counter value. Now the output of the counter value is readily available here. Now what is the operation we are going to carry out? A simple XR operation. Take the plain text. We know the length of the plain text is equal to the length of the counter. Suppose if P1 is of 128 bits, then obviously the counter will also be of 128 bits. And the output of this encryption function is going to give 128 bits output. So the plain text is XR with the output of the encryption function and we get the cipher text. Now, are we going to do chaining here? No, they are independent blocks. Can you see here? They are independent blocks. And the biggest advantage of having independent block is that we can have parallelism. If we have multiple cores in our computer, then multiple cores can perform multiple blocks encryption and decryption at the same time. And we have counter 2 for encrypting the plain text 2. 
So plain text 2 is actually XORed with the encryption of the counter which also takes the same key. So the output is going to be ciphertext block 2. Likewise you can encrypt all the plain text blocks. So this is about the counter encryption. If you see here this part is common throughout the entire process. So for every plain text the encryption function is going to take different counter values. Suppose if this is 10 for example then this will be 11 and the next block will be 12. I mean counter 3 will be 12 and it goes on. So for every plain text like P1 takes a different counter value, P2 takes a different counter value. So every plain text takes a different counter value. And one more advantage is this can also be applied for real time. Say if you keep your system ready with the counter which is already encrypted and this portion is ready and as and when the plain text is generated you can simply perform XOR and generate the cipher text. So this mode can also be suitable for encrypting the real time traffic. You know what counter value you are going to initialize. You know this encryption function is going to take the counter value and the key as an input. And if this data is ready as and when your plain text is generated by the real time application then you can simply perform the XOR and generate the cipher text. So this is exactly the encryption. Now what about the decryption? So the cipher text is given as the input and we get the plain text back. So C1 gives P1. How? The simple operation this is same. So counter 1 is given to the same encryption function here. There is no need for any decryption here. C1 XOR with something gives P1 means P1 XOR with something gives C1. So this is the basic operation of XOR. So this part is common for both encryption and decryption. So for decryption also as I already mentioned in one of the points that the same sequence of counter values is needed. Say for decrypting ciphertext 1 we need the same counter 1 which is given to an encryption function which takes the same key. And the output is XOR with C1 in order to get back P1. Similarly counter 2 is encrypted with the key K. Now this data is XOR with C2 in order to get back P2. And this process is continued till you get back all the plain text blocks. Now this is about the encryption and decryption of counter mode. Let's now see the advantages of having this counter mode. So as I already mentioned we have a lot of advantages of using this counter mode. So you can implement this counter mode in terms of hardware or in terms of software. I mean the counter can be hardware or software. In both the cases the efficiency is really good. At the same time you can have the data ready that is pre-processing can be done easily. Say the encryption function is going to take the counter value. It is also going to take the key and it's going to generate the encrypted text of the counter. Now if this encrypted text of the counter is ready as and when your plain text is generated you can simply perform XOR and generate the cipher text and send it over the network. I have already explained this. And coming to the next one you can have random access. So you can encrypt or decrypt any block at any point of time. The only thing is you need what is the initial counter value and based on the number of blocks you can easily perform encryption and decryption randomly. Since there is no chaining so obviously you can do encryption and decryption randomly. And coming to the next one like other modes this mode of operation I mean the counter mode of operation is also having a provable security. And obviously this mode is simple. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the working of counter mode. We also know the differences of working of counter mode from OFB and we also have known the applications and advantages of having counter mode of operation. I hope this session is informative and thank you for watching.